star singer here. So today I want to talk about the femis, feminist rebellion and hypocrisy. Because when I was young, in the second wave feminism in the 60s and 70s and the 80s, I was a young woman, I got pregnant, I had boys, and we were always fighting against something. But what was it? We didn't know. I didn't know. I was just trying to be good and right. And I realized over the years that there's a lot to be said about hypocrisy. But guess what? I think we're all hypocrites. We just see it and we don't call it out. Now, why is that? I rebelled against the lies I saw the adults telling when I was a kid. Um, Jimmy Dore's mom said, he's not an alcoholic, he's a drinker. And that was a big deal in those days. I mean, in the 50s, everybody was drunk. It was like Tudor England, everybody was drunk, except they were the adults in Tudor England, everybody was drunk, including the children. <laughs> They all drink wine and beer all the time. That's what they drank because the water would kill you. Anyway, they couldn't talk about their bad habits. And so we saw that as hypocrisy. But I really think they were just afraid. It was so tribal. And tribalism is a feminine construct. And that is a thing that none of us really understand, is yin and yang, feminine, masculine. Anyway, when I finally got to the point where I said to them, you guys are alcoholics, they looked at me like I was the enemy, a traitor. You're not supposed to say that out loud. And I didn't mean it as an insult. I meant to point out the naked emperor, but... That child that points out the naked emperor is not the golden child. That truth seer child is gaslit. They gaslight that truth seer child. They, they, the seer child is they. Oh no no no! They say, "You are you are silly. You are silly little poor little child. You silly little shut up," as Tucker says. Shut up. I love Tucker. He's a, he's a hoot now. Anyway, so I rebelled against lying as a young adult in the 60s and the 70s. And I rebelled against the shunning and the shaming that the tribe does because that's feminine power is to say, you can't be in our coffee clutch. You can't be with us because you have done things that don't fit in with what we do, which makes our system work. You're breaking our system. Stop it. Shut up. So that's that's femininity right there. You know, and so feminine violence is not I'll hit you. We hate we hate hitting. <laughs> we feminines, we hate hitting. We don't like it. That's for boys. Girls don't hit. That's why girl fights are so sexy for boys. I mean, the boys are like, "Oh, girl fight." So, you know, we have fight in us, and I'm not saying that doesn't happen and it's an untrue thing, but the nature of the yin feminine is to get revenge. <laughs> it's not to strike out immediately because yang strikes out. So when girls are striking out and girl fighting, they're acting like they're acting masculine. They're doing the boy thing. But from one of the uh, things I understand from Dr. Leonard Sachs, who wrote um, why gender matters is that, you know, when girls hit each other and hurt each other physically, that can be a lifelong shunning that they do to each other. They will not forgive it. Whereas when the boys hit each other and fight, they're done fighting and then they laugh and, hey, buddy, they're even closer friends then. But the feminine doesn't do that. The feminine is like, oh, I, I'm going to poison you in your sleep 10 years, in, in, 10 years later. I mean, the feminine is subversive, dark, deep, and retaliates um, quietly behind the scenes. The feminine is, I mean, that's why the, um, the Christians and the one male God people thought 
that, you know, we got to get rid of her because she's really creepy. <laughs> she has snakes in her hair and she's, she's creepy, scary. So we, we got to get rid of that bitch. She, she's frightening and she is. And see, I think that's the important distinction here that we need to understand these energies, understanding how uh, yin and yang work and what they are in their basic forms will help us to understand ourselves better. All right, so I rebelled against the lying, uh, but the, but they weren't lying to be um, subversive, mean, or wrong. Cultures lie to so we can all fit in together. That's that's the purpose of of it. So seeing the hypocrisy really isn't helpful, and calling it out really isn't that helpful. But understanding it is. Shame is a, is a feminine control system. Shame and blame are, are feminine controls. The, the masculine, the yang, that'll just knock the shit out of you, right? So, um, you know, I used to say that, that women have been called men for eons, and so why not switch it and call out the opposite and say, and call, and have men be she and womankind, but evidently that's not working out as I'd hoped because um, women, even when we were mankind and we were all being called uh, by the masculine pronoun, we knew we weren't men. Just because you were saying he and mankind, women and men, we all knew that women were still women, even though we used the masculine pronoun. And that's what I thought it, when I was younger. I thought, oh, well, let's just switch it over and call men women and see how that's going to work out. Well, obviously I was wrong about that. And uh, because evidently the left brain, the yang side of our brain, the masculine side of our brain, according to Dr. McGilchrist, is the one that is very literal and doesn't see nuance. <laughs> so what we've got is the left brain's in charge and now these dudes are running around saying, well, I'm going to ch literally change into a woman. Well, that's the left brain maniac that's, that's kind of like, I think it's the boss of us these days. And so I think it's important to understand and see these distinctions. Um, well, let's see what's, what's, there's a difference. I've got notes. I'm looking at my notes right now because I'm rambling a bit, which I do. All right, so we did adopt that behavior of the masculine because we saw it as a man's world, and it and it was and is because the left brain is in charge. So that means it's a man's world because though women and men both have two sides of the brain, what has gone on over time is that we have decided that if we can see black and white, and we can grab on to right and wrong in a very literal sense, that's the left brain, that's the yang brain in charge. Um, so women have been working towards having our left brains activated more. And women can be just as big of asshole control freaks as men. It's, it's the right feminine side that's much more understanding and sees a bigger picture. You know, the, the feminine brain, when she's in, in, in good spirits, she, she sees, oh, yeah, that guy uh, punched a guy, and it's not that he's a bad, wicked criminal. Wait a minute, let's look and see what happened to him and see what has led him to this. That's a right brain train of thought, right? Anyway, but as usual, the attempts to um, behave... Uh, in one's true nature haven't worked out so well. Um, I like to use this analogy. Asking a, the legless snake to jump is an unrealistic request. I see people um, who are unable to perform the tasks required by modern culture, by modern left brain culture. So that, you know, you have to um, work hard and um, you have to work hard and, and, and achieve something. Well, not everybody is meant to live in that way. There are people who have things to offer 
that are not about achieving goals. You know, maybe the simpleton is there to sh to make us grateful for our higher stage of understanding. Um, or maybe getting simple is needed. Maybe we need to be more simplistic. So, what if we punish a snake because it refuses to jump? Is it refusing to jump? Does that make sense? When we punish a person for not performing an impossible task, what does that say about us? How can we be so dumb? How, if I tell you to jump and you don't have any legs, am I the, am I the wrong one? Who's wrong? I think I'm an asshole if I do that, or am I'm stupid, or I'm blind, or I'm trying, I'm narcissistically trying to gaslight a legless person because they refuse to jump. Just don't jump because you're not jumping because you you're you're defying me. Really, really, I'm the the legless guy is not jumping to defy me because I said he should jump. Okay, that's just dumb. I see a lot of dumb in modernity. I see a lot of dumb. Um, okay. And that dumb comes from what? That, come, that dumb comes from my abilities are the one and only sanctioned abilities. Jumping is required in this society. If you cannot jump... You have to go away. We will shame you or blame you or kill you. That, that's what it says. And what is that one requirement, that one virtue comes from? And it comes from my perpetual cause, which is to say that having one God is not enough. Because the one God mentality is what brings us back into that I'm right and you're wrong. If we have two gods, a balanced system of a lady god and a man god, then we understand their qualities and how they blended together to make us. Hey, I think that gives us the bigger picture. And that might be my feminine brain in charge. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Because if I don't do that, then I'm saying to the legless man, I know how to jump, and your refusal to jump, like me, is an act of treason. The fact that you are incapable is of no concern. The tribe doesn't care if you don't have any legs. If you're legless, you don't belong in the tribe. And the fact that you're not made for jumping is no excuse. You have to go away. All snakes must learn to hop. Really? Hop. Well, why? Because hopping is goodly and righteous and goddish. The legless must be ungoddish, therefore punish them. And the feminine tribe shuns the legless. Go away. Be alone. We don't like you. You're not like us. The masculine tribe will kill them. Die, evil entity. So right now, we have this trans thing going on, and it's making everybody nuts. My thought on that is that it, we've just taken it too far. In other words, you can't accept every whim. And the tribe says that. You can't accept every whim. And how far do we go in saying that someone has, is incapable of performing the tasks of the tribe and that they should be shunned or killed. And that's what the activists are saying, is that that's not okay. And I understand that. That makes sense. But they've taken it to a place uh, where it's not fair to the tribe now, where we're saying, wait a minute, now we're going the other way, aren't we? Are we saying that the legless are now the ones 
with pretend legs. So we'll pretend that the legless have legs because they say they do. And uh, what does that mean for the rest of us and for our future? It means that we'll be pretend hopping and jumping and that we'll be pretend seeing two legs under our torsos. And then where will we go? We will pretend that we went somewhere walking or maybe driving unless we can have hand gear on our steering. I mean, do you see where this is going? It's going to crazy place, crazy town. Okay, so I am going to say, think on it, and let me know what you think about this legless world and this tribal-ism.